Welcome to Monster Kid Theater and tonight's presentation of Panic. There's an emergency in the laboratory and a serious risk of contamination. Have the emergency squad sent here right away. Repeat. Serious risk of contamination. Close all safety doors. Only the emergency squad is to enter the laboratory. Notify Professor Adams and Professor Vince at once. Apply all measures of maximum security. As 
as president of Chemical, I would say... Yes, this report seems to be sufficient. The Ministry will accept our version of the affair. And we don't have to say anything about the risk of contamination. There's no point in causing alarm. That's impossible, Mr. Milton. Don't forget the people in Newton suspect something. Yes, that's very true. And I would say they are definitely against the kind of experiment we're performing. They won't find out about it. After all, it was accidental. But inexplicable, at least for now. Isn't it, Vince? Oh, yes. Jane, I think we'll make more progress in our research programs if you'll please leave this whole affair to me. If Professor Adams agrees, it's all right by us. I'm glad to hear it. The problem is simply Professor Adams. Hi, Betty. Hi, Lucas. I nearly didn't get here. Yeah. You've been to your sister's? Yeah, that's right. You coming for a... No, I can't. I've got to be back at six. Oh, just a short ride. You promise? Sure. All right. Don't forget. the disappearance of Professor Adams. This isn't the first weekend he's spent fishing. The problem is the disappearance of the guinea pig. Guinea pig? Theoretically, the vaccine may have produced profound genetic alterations in the creature's body. Probably, it has grown in size as well as ferocity. How big? The dimensions of a dog, of a lion, 
For the moment, this is just an hypothesis. It will take several hours to process all the data. But get ready for the worst. Professor Adams prepared us notes only about the methodology of his experiments, not the results. Vince and I know almost nothing about the new vaccine. Well, we must keep our heads, Jane. Chemical is closed for the weekend. The personnel know nothing, so there's no way they can spread damaging stories. But, Mr. Milton, you're forgetting about the auxiliary squad men. Yes. You better get back to work. I'll see if I can track down Professor Adams, and I'll have a word with Sergeant O'Brien to see if the local police can help us out. Yes? Yes, I'll send him right over. Of course, sir. You hear that? The Colonel wants the printout right away. You better get moving. Yes. You know the town of Newton, Captain. I know the one near my hometown in Canada. Oh, this one's in England. However, the Prime Minister is anxious to see the report on the Plurima plan after the issue was raised last week in Parliament. And Chemical is acting mysteriously. How about Professor Adams? The Professor is a scientist, you know, and he likes to deal in certainties. But Milton would have no objection to getting rid of us. Officially, Chemical makes only aspirin and antibiotics. He thinks the Plurima plan is a pain in the neck. A pain he can stand. He made about 10 million, didn't he, from the government? A few hours ago, there was a curious accident in the laboratory, and Professor Adams, the only person who could have explained it, has disappeared. He's supposed to have gone fishing. Fishing? Are you sure? <laughs> Captain, if I accepted everything I was told at face value, I wouldn't be running the security service. I'd be directing traffic. <laughs> Well, I'd better be going. Uh, Colonel, who was Adams' bodyguard? Henry Miles. Hmm. I've worked with him. Hmm. Yes? <laughs> Sergeant, we found the girl's body. It's in dreadful shape. It's over there. I'll show you. Just look. I never would have thought a human being could do such a thing. This is really horrible. I can't think what kind of weapon the killer used on her. But the way she's cut up, it could have been a meat axe. Doctor, I want the results of the autopsy tonight. Right. This is our case. And I want this killer in jail before those London head shrinkers start excusing him. So get going. So, it was one of these things that created all the mess, huh? There are some things that even science cannot understand. It takes time for the mind to accept them as possible. I see. Do you mind if I call you Jane? I'd mind if you didn't. Fine. Uh, what can you tell me about this Professor Adams? You fellows think that people aren't interesting until they disappear. Hmm. You don't have to disappear. <laughs> so, according to your story, the professor is off struggling with a trout. After biology, trout fishing is his biggest passion. Mm. 
Wait in the car while I look around. the best way to treat a lady. I told you to stay in the car, Lady Jane. It's dangerous not to follow orders. <laughs> I think we'd better let some light in. Hmm? Well, it looks like his things are all here. No, not everything. His old military jacket isn't there. You're observant. He always puts it on when he's fishing. I think I'll just take a look around. Recognize him? It's Henry Miles. He was guarding the professor. Yes, I used to know him. Come on. You've been marvelous today, boys. Now you can go. But first, I have something for you. One for you, one for you, one for you, and Thank say hello you. to Granny for me, and be a good boy. See you tomorrow, and don't forget to study. I will. All right, boys, time to go home. Your mummies and daddies are waiting for you. They're expecting you back for dinner. And wash your grubby little hands before you eat, eh? Huh? I say, boys, haven't you forgotten something? Come and get it. Easy does it. And remember, don't stop to play along the way. This substance we found on Henry Miles' body has a completely anomalous cell structure. That isn't the point, Jane. In my opinion, there's a connection between the murders, the accident in the laboratory, and the disappearance of Professor Adams. Perhaps, but you have to prove it. Look, Jane. 
You have to cooperate with me if we're going to find out the truth. And that's more important than the good name of your dear Professor Adams. Mr. Milton wants to see you. All right. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, come in. Captain Kirk, Sergeant O'Brien. How do you do? I've been told the whole story, Captain. I hope I can be of help. Not alone, are you? I'm sorry, but I only have two men under me. And they're busy chasing a homicidal maniac. And you can't be of much Thank help, you, can you, Sergeant, for taking the suggestion I gave you. We must avoid a panic. And above all else, we mustn't attract journalists looking for sensational news. Yes, but I think the people should be warned. Yes, but perhaps later on. And, Captain, remember the overriding necessity that the Plurima plan remain a matter of utmost secrecy. Come in. I didn't know you were busy. No, no, not at all. How are you, Captain? Fine, thanks. Ah, Sergeant O'Brien. How do you do? The computer report is finished. But perhaps it's better if I come back later. No, no, you can speak freely. I don't want these gentlemen to think we have anything to hide. All right. We had the computer set up to analyze all the information available concerning Professor Adams' experiments with the new vaccine. And as expected, the reply was insufficient data. Insufficient? If you would like, you can check it yourself. <laughs> if you gentlemen would excuse me, come along, Professor. Dreadful actors. Don't you agree? What do you mean? All right. What if there is a connection between the accident in the laboratory, the disappearance suddenly of the professor, and the killings? Sergeant? Before we find it, we have to find the professor. As you can see, the area is quite large. We'd need volunteers for a manhunt, but then we'd have to offer an explanation. And that could easily cause panic if it got to the general public. Yeah, and that's not the only problem. We haven't got much time. Why not, Captain? When we find Adams, you'll see, okay? It's you, honey. What a pleasant surprise. No, no, I never go to bed this early. I was just going to have a nice shower. You didn't phone me last night, Ducky. Is that how you're feeling? I am, if you are. But don't you keep me waiting. Put your skates on. See ya.
As you can see, she was killed in the same way as the previous case. And look at this photo. You see? There's the green stuff again. Then you think there's no doubt about it. The man who killed this girl also killed the other one. That's right, Sergeant. And there was another curious feature. Did you notice that in both those cases there was hardly any blood left in the corpses? In the first case, that can be explained. The ground she was lying on had soaked it all up. And this time the killer cleaned the bathroom floor? Some maniacs are like that. Although I know you don't believe the killer's insane. And do you? Who knows? The wounds resemble those caused by an animal. And then there were those strange sores. I'd say they were burns caused by that green substance. Burns, you say? Or it could even have been radiation. I've noted symptoms like those caused by heavy contamination. Apparently this killer, whether it's a man or animal, is a kind of mutant. And as for the blood, he may very well have drunk it. Let him through. Have you seen the papers this morning? Yes, it's scandalous. You can't stop the press. However, I did send someone to deal with it. Good morning, Sir Charles. Good morning, Rutledge. Come and meet Fry of Civil Defense. How do Pleasure. You? I called you because of what's happening at Newton. We have news. Uh, doctor, would you please explain? Gladly. One of the doctors there sent us some cultures. We've managed to isolate a virus. It's a new type of virus, and we're still studying it, but one thing is certain. It's indestructible and very dangerous. Perhaps uh, at Newton, they're doing experiments in germ warfare. That'll be all, Doctor. Thank you very much. You may go now. <laughs> Can I offer you something to drink, Rutledge? As you must have understood, Colonel, we've told no one that Adams was nearing the conclusion of his experiment. Naturally, Sir Charles. There you are. Mm -hmm. You see, Colonel, we were well aware of the risks that the Plurima plan involved, but we still had to carry out the experiment. Unfortunately, something failed to function correctly, and we are now faced with the possibility of an immense catastrophe. Do you think it's already reached that point, Sir Charles? Three minutes ago, the first part of Plan Q was given the go-ahead. But, Sir Charles, the position doesn't warrant Plan Q. You can't be serious maintaining that point of view. It means the total destruction of the town, murdering every living thing in it, including women and children. That's enough, Colonel. Leave the responsibility to me. Sir Charles, I urge you to reconsider on the grounds of humanity. Please control yourself. This isn't the first time we've incurred certain risks. Do you expect to move ahead with the second phase? I'm forced to say yes. Fortunately, it's not up to me to choose the zero hour. That's done by our superiors. How about the press, Sir Charles? I shall muzzle them. <laughs> Is that possible? The arrival of troops at Newton will look very suspicious. We'll make a statement to the press, say, army maneuvers. You can see to the details. If you say so.
right, pile out. Okay. Set up a roadblock. Nick and snap it. Get going. Oh, double. Go on, get the lead out. So we now have the problem of quarantining the town's entire population. But, Colonel, have you read my report? This situation is serious. Naturally, naturally. Have you learned anything about the virus and Professor Adams? The professor's disappeared, but the virus hasn't. Colonel, the virus is deadly. That's the main reason I phoned you. Any other information? Colonel, do you realize that this will be the first time you've used Plan Q? What do you mean, Captain? You know exactly what I mean, sir. Don't worry. And calm down. The authorities have assured me that it won't be necessary. Yes, but what if they're wrong? What if the virus spreads? This whole town could become a cemetery. Now, Captain, you're exaggerating. And be careful of starting a panic, too. I want you to remember that you're the only person who can really handle the situation. I'm no Superman, Colonel. This is no time for modesty. You have to eliminate the source of the contagion because... It endangers the whole world. No one is to enter or leave the town. And you may use your gun if necessary. It's been authorized. You may use your gun if necessary. Do you understand, Captain? Yes, sir. I got it. Hello? I don't know what's going on. Out of the way. You stay here. Mrs. Hatcher? Well, I was talking to my wife and the line went dead. That's funny. So long. Let's get on with it. This place gives me the creeps. Sure it does. You really think this is where we'll find Professor Adams? If he's still alive. Let's look in there. Be careful. It might collapse. That way. My God.
Listen, Tess, are you sure you really want to go to a movie? If I'm not mistaken, it was your idea. Yeah, but we could... Come uh... on, Paul. Okay. begin with. If you want the rest, you have to earn it. Now what you want? One of those huge ice cream cones from the jumbo bar. But it's too far away. It'll take me ages. Don't be silly. It's just down the street. And it's worth it because I'm going to thank you in a special way. Hmm. You promise? Oh, my God. 
What's going on, Sergeant? Why has the town been cut off? What is it? The phones and the TV don't work either. What's it all about, Sergeant? Calm down and stop worrying. For the moment, there's no information. Let me through. No, sir, we. You're not going anywhere until you've told us everything you know. Go back to your houses. This is an emergency. I'm unable to give out information. You're not fobbing me off with dumb excuses. Just a moment, please. <laughs> you can't shoot all of us. Let's not make this business worse than it is. Sergeant, for goodness sake, tell us what's happening. Yeah, we got a right to know what's going on. Let him speak, not you. You're not giving him a chance to get a word out. Sergeant, please. Excuse me. What's the use? Can't you see? Right. They do whatever they feel like. I tell well, them go on like no use losing our tempers. They'll tell us sooner or later. Just be patient. Will you please all be patient? Anyway, let's not hang around here in case that thing comes back. Tell us something. I have very important information for the minister, but it's impossible that you can't get in touch. No, listen. Say it concerns the Plurima plan. Yes. I'll stay here. Please have him call me. Thanks. You home, Daddy? <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, kids? Did you have a good time? Oh, yes, it was super. <laughs> really super? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Everybody says there's some kind of maniac running around. Uh -huh. Yes, it's Everybody true. says oh. so. <laughs> All right, girls, go and get ready for dinner. All right. Off you go. Night. 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 <clears throat> Did you have a talk with the minister? No, not yet. Do you think there's really any danger? I doubt it, dear. Only I'd be a lot happier if you'd take the children up to London. And you? Oh, I'd love to go. Only I have to remain here till they find that fellow Adams. Extra! Extra! Late night extra! Disaster at Newton! Local police elsewhere! Read all about it! Deadly virus in chemical plants! Panic spreading in Newton! PM sends in troops! It's me, sir. Yes, I've read them. I gave the orders. But of course, sir, we sacrifice 1,000 lives today to save millions. That's just the point. Twelve hours, yes, of course. It could be a bit long, but I think the security cover will hold. Uh, don't worry, I'll keep you informed. 
Gentlemen, the zero hour has been set for exactly five o'clock tomorrow morning. For God's sake, Jane, face the facts. All right, Kurt. It's possible that that virus alters living material. I want to check. Look, there was just one man closely connected with the experiment. Your boss, Professor Adams. Why won't you admit it? And he's the monster who rips his victims apart and drinks their blood. I'll explain it to you again. There's no proof. I just have to find out if this is a contagious virus. That's all. <sighs> Jane. Smith, call Army Headquarters. Yes, Sergeant. Now prepare for the worst. I think they've cut the line. Oh, Lord. What's happening to us? Everybody's going crazy. No, the state of emergency isn't my worry. I'm sorry. I want to get my family right out of Newton. No, I said no. I'm not interested. Then get the authorization from the Prime Minister, from the Queen, from anybody you like, it doesn't matter. But if you refuse, I shall get in touch with the press and see that everyone learns exactly what's happening in this town. Because you wanted these dangerous experiments. Got that? Hello. 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 James! James!
What is it this time? Another victim? I've explained everything along the way, Captain. We're in a dreadful mess. People are going around with weapons. If the soldiers try to stop them, they'll start shooting. Look, Captain, the army undoubtedly has a radio. You could call your superiors and ask them to lift the roadblock. Waste of time. Sergeant, there they are. I hope we can keep it from getting out of hand. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah? What's up? Turn back! Turn back! There's a military roadblock! Nobody goes through! <laughs> Take up your position. Step on it now. It's just an army exercise. There's no change. So go back home. Plug in the megaphone. Yes, sir. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. This is Colonel Rutledge of the Army Information Service speaking. For reasons of national security, this town is in quarantine for a period not exceeding 20 days. I repeat, this town is in quarantine for a period not exceeding 20 days. Attention please, attention please. If anyone attempts to force the roadblock, we will be obliged to open fire. We ask for your cooperation in avoiding violence. These measures are for your own safety. Please remain calm. I repeat, these measures are for your own safety. Please remain calm. Give him a warning flare, will you? There's something going on. There's nothing to worry about. All right. Go on back. Get back in your car. I'm trying to think. We have a right to. We have a right to get out of here. We have a right to. Okay. We have a right Have it your own way. Go ahead. Aim ten yards ahead of them. Right, Sergeant. Fire straight at them. Get it 
That fella. Nothing serious. Let's go. Right. Who is it? Open the door. It's us. What is it? What have you come back for? They wouldn't let us through at the roadblock. We'll just have to stay. They call it a cleaning up operation, which means that they wipe out every living thing. Humans, animals, everything. I can't believe it. In military logic, it's the one sure way of getting rid of the virus. For them, it's mathematical. Better to kill a thousand people today than a million later. Isn't that a way we can stop this? If we can convince them that we have an antidote, within five hours. This is all top secret. Of course, Captain. Don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> 
found the antidote? In theory, yes. What does that mean? We have to wait for the guinea pig's reaction in three or four hours. As far as we know, isn't Adams the only carrier of the virus? Yes, since all his victims are dead. So, if we eliminate him, that stops all danger of contagion, right? I suppose it must. I'm sorry for him. But we'll have to kill him. Let's go. Solo. Come on. What do you want? Uh, I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. Uh, Go on home, sleep it off. Uh, it's you, Sergeant. How are you doing? Yeah, for a quick one or you on duty? Go on, run along. Yeah. Sergeant O'Brien. Sergeant O'Brien. You want it to Milton Hall? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yes, this is O'Brien. Yes, Sergeant. I'll be right there. Something's happened to the Miltons. Let's go. Right. would like to see you downstairs. Okay. Here. Have you found anything? Not much. He must have got out this way. My men didn't see him leave the house, and there are traces of blood and that green substance. Milton fired a shotgun at him. Two barrels of hunting shot. What'll it take to stop him? A missile? What are you doing? I want to follow him. I forbid you to. It's crazy. And you don't know how to kill him anyway. I know I don't, but I have no choice. Come on. for a drink, mate? <gasps> Stuck up bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Captain, he almost got you. Yes, sure did. You're wounded. No, uh, the monster's bleeding. Lucky I came looking for you. <laughs> O'Brien, I owe you a beer. Look at this. The abandoned factory, that woman's house, the cinema, and the Milton's. Now we know how he gets from one part of the city to another. Yes, you see, Captain, this area of town is riddled with tunnels that connect with the sewer system. They're part of an ancient Roman drainage scheme. That's what they say, anyway. Well, whatever they were, how many exits are there from these tunnels? There are ways out all around the city. Evening, Captain. Evening, Ross. Flight plan for you. Control tower to Kangaroo 297. Engage manual control systems. Proceed, Ross. Yes, sir. All set, Captain. Kangaroo 297, request permission to approach. Control tower to Kangaroo 297. You may enter approach to runway. How's the cargo? Loading has been completed, Captain. Okay, give it the gas. Captain. <laughs> We've finished sealing up the exit, Sergeant. There's no way you can get out of here now. We can be sure of that. Hmm. Now we have to flush him. The problem is the method. There's fire, of course. No. Just a minute. If we filled the tunnels with some kind of gas, chemical must have one. Chemical? Yeah. We should have thought of them before. They can provide the best solution. No doubt about it. Come on with me. You too. It worked with a guinea pig. Now we can cure Professor Adams. Oh, no, Jane. Use your head. It's impossible. We can't even get close to him in the condition he's in. I'll do it. You'll do nothing of the kind. Listen to me before you say anything. I found the antidote and I'm sure it'll work. It only took an hour to act on the guinea pig. For a man, it should only take three or four hours. You really care about Professor Adams, don't you? My interest is for the whole human race. But we haven't enough time. Why not? Because in one and a half hours, We'll all be dead. I see. Thank you. It's all ready, Sir Charles. The plane will take off at the time we agreed. Officially, we're saying it's a normal training flight over the North Sea. And how will you arrange the accident? At 7.50, the plane will be 30 miles from the coast and two minutes from the objective. And at that point, theoretically, there will be an engine failure. The captain and navigator will bail out after setting the automatic pilot. How precise is it? It's as accurate as a missile, Sir Charles. The precision of a chronometer. Extremely clever of you. Thank you, Sir Charles. Kangaroo 297 to control tower. Any final instructions for our mission? Control tower to Kangaroo 297. You are authorized for takeoff. The captain may now open his sealed orders. Wind is calm northwest, temperature 15 degrees.
There's something wrong, Captain. Uh, no, nothing. The usual orders. Let's move. think that public opinion will accept it? They know what they're doing. It's sabotage that will pass as an accident. And there won't be very many witnesses in a tomb. It's atrocious, inhuman. It's the logic of power. Don't forget that. Professor, take me to the strong room. I need two units of Necron. But it's impossible that you people know about it. No. No way. I must refuse to oblige unless you force me. Please, Kirk. I know I can still save him if I go with you. Not a hope. You're not coming. Stay here. Almost over the objective, Captain. Do these tunnels lead to the sewers? Yes. Here, give me that. The old drainage network empties directly into the sewer system. I know it by heart. And so does Professor Adams. We're both members of the Civic Works Commission. Right, you two, go that way. You come along with me. Yes, sir. Come on. Put it on 
automatic. Is there something the matter, sir? Not a thing. Nothing we can possibly change, anyway. Do you mind if I ask you a question, Captain? Go ahead. Why have you stayed here with us? You could have got away easily. <laughs> Adam stinks. Like this place. I want to see him dead. Sergeant O'Brien. Have you found anything over there? No, nothing so far. Well, keep in contact. I'll keep the switch open. That be okay? Come on. It's almost impossible to breathe, Captain. Yeah, you're right, but we've got to go on. Give me the radio. Yeah. O'Brien! What is it, Captain? Have you found anything? No, we haven't seen a thing. But Brown can't go on. We have to find him. We've only got half an hour. These fumes are going to poison us. Look, Sergeant, we can't stop now. Don't worry, I'm with you. Brown, you'd better get out of here before you collapse. I'll go on. Come on, 
Professor? Professor. Look out! It's broken. I'll go on ahead, okay? You call Brian, right? No, Captain. I want to be in on my kill with you. Sergeant O'Brien, come in, I'm not reading you. <coughs> come in, please. Can anyone hear me? Professor Adams. <gasps> Professor. I know you're here, Professor. Come out, please, so I can see you. I'm Jane, your assistant. Don't you recognize me now? Trust me, Professor. I've come here to help you. Believe me. I don't want to hurt you. There are men who want to kill you, Professor. I can help you. Let me try. Come over here, Professor. Understand me, don't you? Ooh, <laughs> 
few minutes to notify London. Kangaroo 297 here. Come in. This is Kangaroo 297. Please answer. Please answer. I might have known it. Prepare to abandon the aircraft. Abandon it? We're abandoning the plane. Those are orders. What about the cargo? Shut up, will you? And make sure we leave her on automatic. Yes, sir. Ha, 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 ha. 